Mile High Stadium. It's the AFC Divisional Playoff Game. The New England Patriots versus the Denver Broncos. Brought to you by Budweiser. They love their football in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. The 129th consecutive sellout, 76,000 plus partisan Bronco fans to cheer for John Elway and company. As they go against the New England Patriots today, the Broncos looking for their first playoff win since they went to the Super Bowl back in the 1977 season. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen. Welcome to Mile High Stadium where uh, these two teams will be looking for the best of their offenses on a perfect football day. Goodness, 65 degrees in January. Dick, this is September weather, and the thing that's nice about it, it's perfect for what these two teams like to do. They want to throw the football. They want the pass again. It'll be featured here on both sides today. The uh, weather will be no excuse, but both coaches said they'll first try to run the ball. I think the key word there is try. Neither of these teams has been able to run the ball effectively, in particular in the last half of the year. Although Denver did run well against New England early, they'll try and duplicate that. The other fact is that neither team has stopped the run well in the last half of the year. New England, how bad has their rushing game been? Well, they've dipped down to 2.9 yards per carry. That's the worst in the NFL in 20 years. Big games, big stars come forth and make the big play. John Elway, great case to make him the MVP in the AFC. No one in the league makes more big plays, especially after things break down, than John Elway. You take Elway out of this Denver lineup, you have a very ordinary Denver offense. And it's not just those passing numbers. Elway's ability to scramble and get valuable running yards as well. For New England, they've got Tony Eason and a great support team. Well, that was proven down in Miami. They had to win that game. Eason went down. Grogan came in and throwing to those fine wide receivers was able to pick up enough yardage, enough horsepower to bring them here today. As you're going to talk about the big play performers for Denver, you go to the defensive side of the ball. Well, you have to do that for Denver. Two big names. Number 77, Carl Mecklenburg, the outstanding linebacker in the AFC. Number 75, Rulon Jones, the outstanding defensive lineman in the AFC. Pitts will get the ball first. Raymond Berry has a star defensive player that's coming back into form as well. Number 56, Andre Tippett in the Pro Bowl for the second consecutive year. And Dan Reeves has really had his work cut out for him in this two-week wait for this game. They played their worst game of the year in Seattle to finish the regular season. They've been talking about and preparing for increased intensity. They've had almost a scrimmage-type atmosphere in their preparation the last two weeks. Reeves said he was embarrassed and angry. He admitted that he's never been angrier than after that Seattle debacle. And he also remembers two years ago about this time his team heavily favored loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Carlos kicks it off. And this final of the four games this weekend, we'll see Carlos almost hit it into northern Colorado. Adrenaline. Oh, my. There comes Tony Eason, the man who took the Patriots as the surprise team to the Super Bowl last year. Craig James and Mosi Tatupu, both those men under three yards, rushing Average, Stanley Morgan had a brilliant year, his best ever, the all-time receiver in Patriot history. Irving Fryer, ever dangerous. Greg Beatty, the rookie from Stanford to tight end. Holloway Fairchild, Brock Wooten, and Haley, the rebuild offensive line. Easton throws on first down to Tony Collins. It's Collins, not Tatupu, who starts. And Tony Collins gains uh, four yards plus. He had nine catches against the Broncos in the earlier game, won by Denver, 27-20 here. Rulon Jones, all pro, Greg Bregan on the nose, Andre Townsend, the front three. Bronco defense very cleverly designed. Jim Ryan, Mecklenburg is a big play artist, Hunley a hitter, Tom Jackson, the oldest linebacker in the league. Louis Wright and Mike Harden, who had two interceptions for touchdowns at the corners. Randy Robbins starts for Dennis Smith and the veteran Steve Foley, the other safety spot. Elon Jones charges into the offensive line. Was he attractive? False start prior to the snap. Number 76 offense. Down. Brian Holloway, the left tackle from Stanford. And it'll be first and 15. Jerry Seaman is the referee. It's an all-star crew. Many of them have not worked together during the course of the regular year. They're here on merit. 
first and 15. First, check that second and 11 after the five-yard pickup. Eason almost runs into James, and then James runs into the orange jerseyed Denver defense. Simon Fletcher, 73 in there at a defensive spot. Early piece of the action. So now the Patriots, Merlin Olsen, look at third and long, and that's where Denver loves to put the opposition. The Denver defense is toughest, Dick, against the passer when they know that you can't have the option of that easy run. Third and seven. Out of the shotgun. And they hand it off to Collins. He's got some running room. 30 and out of bounds with a first down at the 37-yard line. Randy Robin, Robbins finally got to him. But Collins, out of the shotgun, rushes for 14. Well, everyone keying in on the throwing by Grogan, or by Eason. Grogan calls the play from the sideline and just hands it down there to Collins, who legs beyond the marker to pick up the first down. Number 14, Steve Grogan. He calls the plays. Tom Ramsey signals him in. He's the third string quarterback. Play action by Eason. Tutupu, and it was almost intercepted by Ricky Hunley. Tutupu open, and the ball flipping through his fingertips. Quick look at that. Almost a turnover there for Hunley. That's the kind of thing when you have a successful run, Denver's defense thinking run. You freeze them momentarily and try and flip it over the top. Oh, how close that was to being an interception for Ricky Hunley. on the draw. Carl Mecklenburg. They called him the albino rhino at the University of Minnesota. And Craig Cragen in on the tackle. Now you see how that Patriot rushing game has deteriorated. James from 4-9 to 4-7 to only 2-8. Collins 4-4-2-6. To Tupu from four to three to two point four. Oh, they miss John Hanna. They miss Lynn Doss and that fine blocking tight end too. And Steve Moore, who went down with knee surgery at the tackle, over the middle to Collins and almost deflected back to Greg Beatty. Ender will get the ball and they love it at mile high. at that last play the snap was fumbled by Eason breaking up the timing on that play making it very difficult when he finally did get it inside Collins who has excellent hands bounced it off his shoulder you know that play reminded me of a playoff game a few years ago the Raiders and Chargers where Raymond Chester caught the ricochet and went for a long touchdown early Beatty had he caught it had a clear sailing Will Hyde at the 15 and Gerald Wilhite, the all-purpose runner for the Broncos, is to the 24. Jim Bowman made the tackle. 47-yard punt, 8-yard return, and John Elway will be in action when we return. Broncos get the ball for the first time at their own 24. John Elway at quarterback. Sammy Winder, their leading rusher, five consecutive years. He had 789 yards this year. Gerald Wilhite is their top receiver. He caught uh, 64 this season. Vance Johnson with speed. Watson is the clever move man. Orson Mobley. Actually, we're going to start with two tight ends. Joey Hackett and Orson Mobley. With Winder, the only running back, and he set way out to the left. Now line up behind Elway. From the 24. Fake to Winder. Elway going deep. Johnson, what a catch! Did he hold on? At the 50-yard line, Vance Johnson, a circus play. The Patriots have started Ernest Gibson in place of LePet. They come back right here and go at Claiborne. The Pro Bowl cornerback 
Vance Johnson just driving him off with the speed and then catching what looked to be a very difficult pass and then hanging on as his body crashed to the ground. Apparently he was able to get his body underneath the ball while he was juggling it. First down near the 50. Winder on the draw. Gets a couple. The key in the first game, Merlin, when New England dominated the first half, led 13 to 3 at the half, but then struggled in the second half with the fact that they were able to run up the middle against New England, Denver. They really attacked the nose tackle, Toby Williams. They did it in several ways. They did it by bringing people in motion and trapping on it. Here they're using the single block by Billy Bryant, but that play designed to go right up inside. Denver will run those plays at the nose until New England stops them. going for it all and Raymond Claiborne excellent coverage on rookie Mark Jackson from Purdue let's look at the defense of the Patriots a couple of birthday boys in that secondary Brent Williams a rookie from Toledo Toby Williams not related on the nose Garen Barris had a big game against Elway their first meeting Tippett the pro bowler Rembert replaces uh, the injured Steve Nelson Lawrence McGrew and Don Blackman Blackman underrated Ernest Gibson for Ronnie Lepet. Lepet turned an ankle this week in practice. Claiborne, the veteran of birthday on Friday. Roland James. Fred Marion celebrated the birthday on the second as well. So did Craig James. Three Patriots, the same birthday this Friday. There's Nate. Elway going to Thompson and complete. And Elway off the mark on the last two throws as they tried to go deep. But there might be a design in that for Dan Reeves to make the Patriots think about the long ball. In comes the putter, the third this year for Dan Reeves. Mike Horan, he kicked for the Eagles in 84 and 85. Irving Fryer, very dangerous return man, drifts back to the New England 10. Horan wearing number two, first time in 20 years that Denver players worn two. Cookie Gilchrist was the last. That had a lot of dust on it when he came here about a month ago. Did he get to wear the striped socks too, <laughs> that vertical stripe? I can't seem to find any of those. Left foot a kicker, and he spirals one away from Fryer. Oh, that very nearly caught the one-yard line. It took a New England bounce, and the Patriots will begin at the 20-yard line. Tony Eason, plus nine this year, 19 touchdowns, only 10 interceptions. Will bring the offense on the field. 11.20 left in the quarter. Advances to the semifinals of the Super Bowl Derby. Joining the Redskins and the Giants will play the late game next Sunday for the NFC Championship. The Giants, oh, what a surprise, pounding the 49ers 49-3. The Cleveland Browns in overtime yesterday, waiting to host the winner of this game. Eason to James. Yep, that's the rushing game of the Patriots. They just are unable to move the ball on the ground. So all the pressure on the passer Eason and his fine receivers. In that last 86-yard drive, so critical to the win in Miami, they ran 10 running plays to get that ball downfield. They felt that they had revitalized that running game. Well, the fellas in orange have other thoughts about today. yardage to the 24 five yards so it'll be third and six sometimes late in the season concentration tends to wane a little bit for the quarterback look at Easton's season when you split it in half and the critical number interceptions no interceptions in eight games nine touchdowns second half of the season ten touchdowns but also ten interceptions check uh, Elway's report card when Denver gets the ball. Three wide receivers. And then a reverse to Fryer. And Freddie Gilbert unable to make the tackle, but he ruined the play. Gilbert number 90. Jim Ryan finished it off. Joe Collier's defense well conceived. 
you'll always have someone out there responsible for containment. The man this time, number 90, Freddie Gilbert. He's waiting there. Pryor able to use his quickness to get away from him, but not from the others who followed close behind. Mike Hart, number 31, there to make the stop. Camarillo, as you look at Joe Collier, the defensive wizard of the Broncos. Gerald Wilhite back at the 34. Scuffs this one, but it might take a good bounce for New England. Nope, it does not. And we'll roll dead at the 34-yard line. Now Rich Camarillo, who's had some boomers, gets 45 yards on a kick that sliced, sliced off the right side of his foot. Timeout, 9.03 left in the first period. He swims How about next week in Cleveland? 12 o'clock for NFL 86. Seems to be starting back there. Dick, I've been back there next to that lake when it was so cold that you couldn't you'd move and you're afraid you're going to break in half. Uh, we're probably not going to be blessed with this kind of day back there. Maybe harder to throw the football. And, of course, Cleveland's a passing team just like these two. And the Browns fans will keep it hot for us. So it was 80,000 at the giant horseshoe at Lake Erie waiting to meet the winner of this one. Wonder who they're cheering for. No score. Nine minutes left first quarter. And the winder. They attack the middle, and Winder has a first down. That was the wham play, Merlin. Right up the gut. Denver going back to what worked for them in the earlier game against New England. Watch number 90, Williams inside. They come down with Bishop, 54, 47, Wilhite, a good block in there. They turn loose a hard-working Sammy Winder. He winds it up for a first down. 11 yards on the play to the 45. Steve Sewell leading the block on Winder, but Andre Tippett. Boy, he makes the kind of tackles that, you know, I guess up in uh, ski country in Bale, they call those yard sales. Boy, when he hits you, everything flies. <laughs> He may be 100% now. Didn't play as if he was totally healed the last two or three games, but the extra week off looks like that'll help him. I think that two-week rest helps anyone who's injured. In fact, he said his knee felt well enough that he might go without his knee brace, but he hasn't done that. He's got it on out there. I know they're talking about Lawrence Taylor, but when I'm 100%, I'll make you think about me again in a hurry, says Tippett. He doesn't lack in self-confidence. Elway not happy with that throw. We gave you Eason's numbers on a split first eight games, last eight games. Elway's numbers similar. 12 big touchdowns, only four interceptions in the first half of the year. The last half of the year with his offense struggling, a defense struggling, a lot more interceptions. And you could see and not as many touchdowns. So Denver really trying to regain their momentum. Yeah, their strength was out the uh, top of the year, I recall, with the six straight wins to start the season 6-0. New England had a seven-game win streak in the middle of the year. Third down and eight. This is what Elway does best on the move. Throws it to the wrong man. Rod McSwain intercepts for New England. And there's the first turnover at the Patriot 38-yard line. Swain right on top of number 80, Michael Clark Jackson. You'll have a chance to see it. Elway really trying to gun it into a man that's covered. Sometimes that strong arm is a curse as well as a weapon. And Elway tried to throw it to a man well covered in this situation. It backfires. New England will have an opportunity to take it over. They mark it at the 39-yard line. McSwain had it played perfectly. Intercepted Marino's last pass in that Miami game on Monday night. In essence, a playoff win for New England. From the 39, Easton. Nobody open. Rulon Jones and Jim Ryan for the sack. Coming right at you, you'll watch the rush from the inside. Eason takes extra time as he could not find the open receiver. It proved to be a mistake. He's out of your picture, but not out of the gun sights of number 50, Ryan, and number 75, Jones. They'd like to get to Eason, test his confidence, and test his 
toughness early. Remember, he uh, bruised a nerve in his shoulder making a tackle in the Miami game, and Grogan came in to finish the job. He extricates himself there to the 40, and Steve Foley brings him down at the 40-yard line. He picked up uh, all the yardage he lost on the sack, plus a couple, a 10-yard gain. The best rushing average on the New England Patriot team, aside from a receiver carries seldom as this man. He has a 4.9 average as a running, as a rusher. He has run very effectively on the year, a little awkwardly there, but does what he has to do, picks up the first down. Not the first down, but picked up the 10 yards, nine of which have been lost, eight of which on the sack. So it's third down and eight. Rulon Jones almost another sack. And not doing a very good job of keeping him away from Eason. The incomplete is Eason trying to pump fake or not throw the ball, throw it into the ground. Dick, you mentioned that injury to Eason last week, and I asked him, was it really your shoulder or your arm? He said, actually, it was my neck. He said it was like somebody had stuck a hot knife into my neck. You're exactly right. He wanted to pull that one back, get the fake of that long arm pump, and then go deep. <laughs> it didn't work. A reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting the Budweiser Most Valuable Player in today's game. Announcing that near the end. Cyril Wilhite back at the 18. Camarillo's second punt. Like that is third punt of this first quarter. And he drills this one. And it goes into the end zone. Camarillo. 65, 70 yards in the air off the foot of Camarillo. Timeout with 5.55 left in the first. Taking your business on the road can be a cumbersome task. And productivity can easily fall off. Presenting the IBM PC Convertible, a powerful personal computer that easily converts to a full function portable. One you can use in a train, a plane, a car, or a meeting and be as productive on the road as you are at the office. The IBM PC Convertible. One computer for people who really need two. Patriot defense uh, out for the playoffs knee surgery. Standing next to Rod Rust, and of course, Nelson was the on-field general for this New England defense. That job now has been handed over to Johnny Rembert, number 52, who is calling the defenses on the field, and that's, that's a little bit of an uncomfortable job if you haven't done it before. From the 20, Denver, Will Height. Oh, right down and a flag. Garen Barris apparently got him by the face mask. Even though he was behind, Will Height must have reached around and made well, the illegal tackle. Will Height made a U-turn. And that'll be a 15-yarder, I think. That's the personal foul. Using the mask to make the tackle. Now, that's not an inadvertent mask. Watch number 60, Barris, reaching in. And watch the head snap right back around. That is dangerous. Personal foul, face mask, number 31 defense, first down. Marked from the spot of the foul, so it's out to the 34-yard line, first down. Neither team able to move the ball, just one big play. That was the 25-yard pass from Elway to Vance Johnson, and it took a spectacular catch by Johnson to gather that in. That's about the story, offensively, of this first period. Drilling that ball incomplete. Don Blackman, number 55, driving back into the zone, leaped up in the air, just got a fingertip on that ball to knock it away. What a great athlete he is. His size, 6'3 and 235, played at Tulsa's college ball. Seven and a half sacks with all the publicity. Tippett earns. It's easy to overlook Blackman, but none of the coaches that play against New England miss him. They know his uh, outstanding talent.
Denver will feature number 30, Sewell, as a running back, as an H-back. In this situation, he's down the sideline. That's the matchup they want with the linebacker, Lawrence McGrew. 31 coming over to try and help, but there's no chance on that. And Elway, critically, with time to throw that football, to find that seam beyond the linebacker. Tough catch, too. He had to turn his body 180 degrees. He had to look from the sun into the shade. 39 yards for Sewell. And the deepest penetration for Denver in this game. Watson. First and goal. on this play and then that ball in the air before he even made the break tough to cover a man like Elway's passes when you give a receiver that much room Steve Watson gets 21 on that catch first and goal from the seven yard line Will Height gets about half that Toby Williams 90 in the middle of the stack Ray Berry the Hall of Famer his father is here Ray Sr. from Paris, Texas, where he was a storied high school football coach. I think probably in these two coaches in Reeves and Barry, the most placid, although Reeves will get excited on the sideline, but his approach, very cerebral, I guess would be the right word for both of them. Elway doesn't like the call for the defensive set or was running out of time and spends one of Denver's timeouts in this situation. Collier has been here through three ownerships and five head coaches. Second and goal from the four. That's Sewell in motion. as if he wants to run. He didn't quite make it. Right at the one-foot line. Elway thought he was That's in. Flag. Elway is not allowed to spike that football. The ball is still live, and that'll be a penalty. He let his emotion get the best of him, and that'll cost him. Delay of game offense. It's a draw. Elway does not fool Toby Williams. Williams from Nebraska, where he was a walk-on. His brother, Jimmy, who was a top pick of the Lions, was a linebacker there the, out of Washington, D.C. They were overlooked as collegians, and Williams was in the pro draft as well. This Denver offense loves to turn Elway loose on that quarterback draw, and I, I'd like to have a dime for every time that New England has talked about that this week. You spend two weeks looking at a team, you know what they want in that situation. They were ready for Elway. Rich Carlos, a solid year, 27-yard attempt. Denver gets three, but because of an unusual penalty, Elway thinking he had a touchdown in frustration. Instead of getting the ball at the one-foot line on third down, it was third down at the six, and Denver unable to get what they were after, the full set. But the first quarter quandary of the Denver offense continues. Carlos and Stephen Starring will not have a chance. To show you how tough things have been for the Denver offense, well, it's not tough for him. This is a thrill for <laughs> this young Kelly guy. Wall. Little five-year-old, he won a contest to J.C. Benny. He's supposed to go out and pick up the tee. Well, <laughs> Carlos kicked it so far down the field. Kelly said, I don't know where it is. There it comes. He got it. Now, you look at that face. Is that worth a million dollars? And out of that will gain two. Ryan and Woodard. Mecklenburg all there for Denver. Woodard 52 was there initially. He is being groomed to replace the veteran Tom Jackson. Jackson in his 14th year. The oldest linebacker in the league. And there are rumors that 
Jackson will retire at the end of the season and Woodard would be his replacement. Eason underneath and broken up by Hunley. Irving Fryer, the intended receiver. I talked to Steve Grogan about how he would be calling his plays early in the game and his biggest concern was to keep as much pressure as he could off of Eason. As a quarterback, he said, I know what it takes to get him into the rhythm of the game. I'm going to try and call plays without putting him in awkward situations to get him into the flow of the game. Yeah, but his running game isn't getting him in the right positions. And again, he has to work out of the shotgun third and long. Underneath to Fryer as the pressure was on. They were bringing Steve Wilson on a corner blitz. It looked like that ball may have been deflected. Either that or just badly thrown because it was miles short. Watch for Wilson, number 45, from the right side of your screen. And indeed, it was he who stretched up and got a piece of that second deflection on Easton's passes on the day. So Tony Easton is two for seven for a total of eight yards. Camarillo been busy. Two minutes left in the first quarter. And he's kicking for the fourth time. Very high, but short. Will Height fair catch at the 45-yard line. Coming up next weekend, January's champions take to the links at beautiful Acosta, the final round of the Money Tournament of Champions. And quite a lineup, Buzzy Zeller, U.S. Open champ Ray Floyd, Greg Norman, PGA champ Bob Tway, all the top players that uh, were winners of titles during the season past at La Costa. Elway to throw long, looking for Johnson. Almost intercepted by Raymond Claiborne. It'll be second down and 10. showing a desire to stretch that defense Merlin Olsen he's trying to go long he's trying to get him to move out of his way a little bit but that's not easy to do second down at the 46 <laughs> through the hands of Gerald Wilhite McGrew, the closest defender. That ball thrown very crisply and just slightly behind, in fact, on the back shoulder of Wilhite. And Elway, even without trying, even when he tries to throw the ball softly, tends to zip it in there. If it's not the right position, extremely hard to catch. Third and ten for the Broncos. Elway, three for nine, 85 yards, one interception. Good pressure, but he's able to elude it. And then misfires. He had Mark Jackson open at the 37 of New England through behind him. That pass, Nick, reminiscent of some of the passes he threw in a game here, in the first game here, when in the first half, Elway was throwing everywhere but into the hands of his receivers. I wonder if number 60, Garen Varis, let's watch him. He might have gotten a piece of it. There's Varis, good pass rusher, trying to keep Elway in the pocket. Varis quick enough to do that. Yeah, it wasn't Varis. I, I think it just came out of his hand badly. He said that was the worst half of football when he was trying to throw the ball he'd ever had. Irving Fryer back at the 10 for New England as Aaron has his second putting chance. Dying spiral. Good kick. Out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Yeah, it's been a tough year for the punters in Denver. They started with Jack Wheel, then went to Chris Norman, and finally found Mike Horan, who has been by far the 
best man of that trio 41 yards on that one no return yesterday about this time Raymond Berry was completing practice down at that far corner right in that corner and he said I'm all the players had gone he said I'm just going to wait a while I said well why aren't you leaving he said I want to see just how that sun is going to impact my receivers you can see looking back in that corner you're staring into the sun Barry such a meticulous prepare and he wasn't going to miss anything his team doesn't have to worry about that in this spot they're running the ball and that's Reggie Dupard, the rookie from SMU, their number one draft pick, who carried only 15 times all year, picking up reasonable yardage, at least uh, when you compare it to what's been happening in this first quarter for New England. And those are the shadows, you know, working from the team right now going right to left. Denver in the first quarter, that'll change shortly. There's 120 left in the first, having to look back into the sun when they're going from right to left. on the carry by Dupont. This is Greg Hawthorne who slams out to the 26-yard line. Hawthorne who played a tight end most of the year now has moved into the backfield with Beatty taking that tight end starting job. It would appear that the Patriots uh, opting to try and rotate those backs in there, keep fresh backs in there. It has paid off with a rushing first down here. A rather rare creature for the Patriots. And a unique tandem of Dupard and Hawthorne. They stay in. First down. Dupard showing his quick start out to the 28-yard line where Ken Woodard and Mecklenburg make the tackle. Steve Grogan, a veteran from Kansas State in his 12th year, number 14. There you see the play sheet in his right hand, and then he'll tell Tom Ramsey, and Ramsey, number 12, will signal in to Grogan, uh, into uh, Tony Eason. it down. Grogan, of course, one of the one of only two quarterbacks in the league to be called a wager, hundred dollars for the man who would lose his temper first. Well, losing his cool today may be more costly than just a C note for Elway. Here's the play as he rolls left. It was a run designed all the way on second and goal. He thought he scored a touchdown, but a solid tackle turns him around and that right hand turned back into the field of play. He rolled into the end zone, thought he had a touchdown. When he learned he didn't, he picked up five yards for that delay of game temper. Now, if that, this game comes down to a one or two or three point difference, that indeed could be the difference in the ballgame. We open the second quarter. New England has not passed the 50 yard line. Eason has Morgan open. Stanley Morgan, and he's just knocked out of bounds as he was putting in it into high gear. Steve Foley saved the touchdown. A little pump fake and a little hitch and go by Morgan. A big yardage play. Stanley the steamer, they're trying to bump and run him on the line with Steve Wilson, 45. This is not a man that you can bump and run. There's the saving tackle by Foley, who has to come all the way across from the safety position. Otherwise, the steamer was going to steam it into the end zone. 36 yards on the play, the biggest play for the New England offense by the man who caught 84 passes this year. Fourth best in the NFL. Dupar, the rookie, trouble with a handoff, but showing good desire inside the 30. Steve Wilson up to make the tackle. Morgan, who finished fourth behind Todd Christensen, Jerry Rice, and Al Toon with his 84 catches and his yardage, second only to Rice. I think, though, Dick, that if Ron Meyer were still coaching this New England team, Stanley Morgan might be gone. He really had gotten so discouraged, so despondent, that his performance had dropped almost to nothing. Good play action by Eason. That's Beatty, the tight end. Greg Beatty, a basketball player at Stanford, and he's out of bounds inside the 20. Ten yards on the play. Just a minute ago, I mentioned Flo and, and what Grogan is trying to do for his fellow quarterback, Eason, on the field. You kind of feel it now. For the first time, this New England offense is starting to get momentum. Eason able to hit that long pass to Morgan, come right back with a run play out of a passing set 
and then drop off the short pass to Beatty. Dr. Grogan, you say, Coach Grogan, he said, don't call me coach. <laughs> he still wants to play. You bet he does. And he showed he still can play in Miami. <laughs> New England's deepest drive, they trail 3-0. Eason going for six to Morgan. Touchdown! Stanley Morgan, who caught ten touchdown passes during the course of the year. A perfect throw from Eason and a 19-yard score. One of the things this Denver defense has done best over the years is to hold down the number of big plays. Right at the tail end of the season, they began to give up some of these long bombs. And it's Morgan driving into the corner, pushing Steve Wilson 45 off. And that was a, just a perfect pass from Easton. You can't throw that ball any better. Tony Franklin, the leading scorer in the NFL this year, during the Pro Bowl visit, adds the extra point. And with less than a minute gone in the second quarter, the New England Patriots on a drive inspired by Eason to Morgan passes. Two throws. They were six plays, 87 yards, 55 of the yards on two passes to this man, Stanley Morgan. This one for the score. New England, a dangerous team. You can stop them and stop them and stop them, but they come back and respond with the big play. The seven-pointer here. Brogan and Ramsey, Eason's counterparts. He knew he had a good play. By the way, Tom Ramsey, number 12, we're going to see some good play again, I suppose, as we did yesterday from Jay Schrader, the looming quarterback with the Washington Redskins at UCLA. Ramsey was the starting quarterback. Kept Schrader played bench. behind him. That's, That's right. right. Kept him on the bench. Turned him to baseball. So the, the third string, uh, they feel they've got some uh, strength there as well in New England. For the sixth straight game, Dan Reeves' offense failed to score a touchdown in the first quarter, and now he's seen New England score early in the second period. You saw that little exhalation by Reeves of one of, uh, well, wonder perhaps. Reeves has been challenged because of his lack of willingness to, to try and be a motivator to this team. He said, hey, if I have to give pep talks every week, I've got the wrong kind of players. Franklin. Kicking to Bell and Lang. It's to Gene Lang's side. And he's going to take it out from two yards deep. And gets it to the 18-yard line. Derwin Williams, number 82, around the ankles of the return man. A 21-yard return. Dan Reeves, his sixth year in Denver. No Bronco coach in history could make that claim before. And, of course, now the winningest coach in Bronco history. He and Barry, as well as Ditka, were all assistants, and John Makovic. Tom Landry in Dallas. He and Ditka were roommates for six years. No way. Going wrong again. This time for Mark Jackson. Well, well covered by Roland. James and Ernest Gibson was there as well. A very long, incomplete pass. Talking about their relationship of, and yeah, we'll do that in just a second. Go across to the other side of the field to take a look at that. Watch how closely this receiver is covered. In fact, I think if that ball had been on target, the defender would have had a better chance at it than Jackson. Roland James showing you excellent speed downfield through the air some 60 yards. Right. Almost intercepted yeah. by Rembert. No, it isn't. It oh. came in on one hop. Rembert short hopping that pass from Elway who threw under pressure. It was Tippett putting the heat on Elway. Take a peek at that last play. Always had a couple in and out of the hands of the opposition here. Rembert, as we mentioned, who's calling the defensive signals, positioned himself perfectly in there. Let's see if we can see that ball hop. Ooh, we can see it zip. <laughs> Talk about hop on a fastball, and Elway gets them bouncing off the ground on that. 
that he's hard to catch for both sides, defense and his own receivers. Third and ten. Down the middle to Mobley, the big tight end. First down at the 39. Orson Mobley. Jim Bowman made the tackle, and Mobley was the new name on the block. He had 22 catches late in the year. Almost all of them, as you mentioned, coming quite late, and they want to utilize his skills as a pass catcher. Huge target for Elway. Good speed, in fact, quite amazing speed, and he's working against the secondary that has to give up about three or four inches in height to it. He's 6'5 and 260. at the 41-yard line. Lawrence McGrew there first, a four-yard gain. Dick, just to finish the thought we started earlier, talking about the relationship of, of Reeves and, and uh, Mike Ditka as we check that Will Hyde is still down on the sideline. Usually after big games or before big games, those two talk, and we ask uh, Dan Reeves if he did get a hold of uh, Mike Ditka after the uh, Chicago loss. The answer is, for obvious reasons, I simply did not call. I know Dick is pulling for Reeves, though. Runner, you don't want to lose him. Second and six. Winder and Lang in the backfield. And the throw is to Sewell. Steve Sewell for about five, maybe six, to the 47, close to a first down. We mentioned the featuring of Sewell from various positions on the field. Here he comes from a wide receiver position in motion and ducks up into the shadows. He got away from him momentarily. Quick pass by Elway, who was getting pressure from Brent Williams on the outside. Down to within about a half a yard of that first down. Will Height appears to be okay, raising his arm, showing no pain there. And the Wolves, he will return. Third and short. Ooh, hitting the backfield, but laying a second effort and a first down. Gene Lang from LSU. Didn't see a lot of action this year. He had a lot of bumps and bruises. Rushed for only 94 yards, as you can see, after a good season in 85. Simply second effort. They had him in the backfield, had him locked up, would have had him stopped. Denver would have had to kick the ball, but he kept his feet moving and was able to pick it up. Dennis Owens had him for a loss, but he broke away. Eleven and a half minutes remaining, first half. On, New England seven, Denver three. Gene took that Sammy Winder, and he's tackled for a loss, and a flag is down. Rod McSwain made the hit. Thrown from the backside, could well be a holding penalty against Denver's offensive line. The illegal use of the hands the other way against... New England. That's an unusual call. That is call. an unusual call. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. Use a hands to the face. Number 96 defense. First down. That's Brent Williams, the rookie defensive end. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. Designed to protect the players. You're not allowed to use the hands to the face or the helmet. They throw the flag when you do. First down on the penalty at the 46 of New England. Winder to the 39 yard line. Fred Marion finally brought him down. Up the middle, that was the key, as we said earlier, in their win the first time they played in the uh, early season. Coming right at you and right at Dennis Owens, the nose tackle. They were able to control him with the center. Bishop slides over and gets a good block on 52 Rembert. And then it's all Winder as he just drives up inside for an excellent game. Winder from Southern Mississippi. Fifth round pick in 82. He gets the call most nine. Is that a fumble? I believe they called the ball dead at the 34. That would be a first down. Lang really 
cent spinning. Looking from the opposite side of the field. Quick toss to the outside. They've just gone right up the middle. Of course, you like to vary it, switch it up. Ball bouncing loose. Hard to tell from that high angle. What was down and what was up. Ball was definitely loose. Five minutes gone in the second quarter. Denver trails 7 3. Tenth play of this drive. had his troops in pads and they were in a virtual scrimmage early in the week. This is what he wanted to reestablish. The kind of hammering up front that has allowed them to run the ball. They did not do it well during the last part of the season, but you see good movement off the line there and an explosion by a winder as he gets upfield for a fine game. Winder again for what appears to be a first down. Through and tip it with a tackle. And the crowd acknowledging another four downs for the Broncos as they move inside the 25. A grudging New England defense. Rod Rust has his troops, of course, as usual, playing deep. They make you work your way down the field. And Elway said early, he said, I've got to be patient. I've got to take what they give me. And you've noticed when he's gone deep, there's always been someone there. Now they're picking, picking underneath. Screen. And what a tackle. Open field hit by Don Blackman, number 55. That appeared to have long yardage written on it, except for that man. You mentioned the fact that he has been overlooked by many who would give all of the accolades to tip it on the other side, but not only great reaction, what great strength, one arm, and just literally pulled the man back and down without letting him get away. Only two yards on the play when it appeared that might even be a touchdown. for seven. Rich Carlos out of Kubiak's hold and it's Denver back in the lead. Flag is down. Maybe against New England. No, the other way. So they'll have to kick it again after a 10-yard penalty. We talked about Elway's ability to make a broken play or a bad play turn into something very special for his team. And here it is right here. Great foot speed, a nose for the end zone. He'll do what he has to do to help his team win. Yeah, when he was the very first player picked by the Colts in 1983, and then the trade engineered where he finally came to Denver, he had all this potential written about him, obviously, and he had trouble as a rookie, but he has really blossomed into one of the game's very best. This would be almost the equivalent of a 30-yard field goal. And Carlos just does hook it in there. 7.42 left in the second. 10-7 Denver. John Elway's 22-yard scramble completing an 82-yard drive in 13 plays. And they were thundering their applause while we were away in that commercial break. These stands actually shake. And, of course, with that touchdown, Elway really livens up this crowd. They're going to be pretty noisy as Easton drives his way into the closed end of the stadium. 
Stefan starring deep as Carlos kicks it off. Very high. Starring coming up to get it on the run at the 15. Has some running room now. Cross field, a flag down, and Starring is down at the 39-yard line. Randy Robbins, 48, made the tackle along with Ken Woodard. They're going to carry it back, and that's really a shame. That was a great return, a, a daring move by Starring as he streaked up the sideline to catch that ball and take it out. But I think they're going to take it back. Rick Dennison, number 55, is the injured Bronco. See whether it was Dennison that was fouled. No, you can see it was Bell 35 pushed in the back. Dennison is right there, just made his turn, and as he turned, he got hit. Didn't have a chance to see those blockers coming at him. He's up. Holding. He's moving. During the return, number 28, receiving team, first down. Jim Bowman, guilty of a hold. Dennison apparently is okay. And the penalty marks it back to the 14-yard line. So instead of the 39, it's the 14. 10 to 7, Denver leads midway through the second quarter. is all the way to the 35-yard line. Tony Lilly, number 22, made the tackle a 23-yard play. Both teams have been able to hit big runs out of that spread or shotgun formation. Rulon Jones on the nose. They drive him out. They're going pass rush all the way. There's a lot of room inside. And Collins very quickly takes advantage of it for the first down. That's the longest run by a running back for New England this year, 23 yards. It was 17 yards coming in, was it by Collins? Good fake by Eason. Underneath to Hawthorne. And Mecklenburg finally gets him down with help. Craigan came back from the nose guard to assist Mecklenburg. Within the framework of this Denver defense, they will move Mecklenburg to any of seven positions on that front. They'll also move Rulon Jones. He'll play all of the down positions for the linemen. But both have favorite positions. Mecklenburg likes that inside strong linebacker, Zip. And Rulon Jones likes the outside in. I think because that's where they're suited to play. What do you think their least favorite position is universally? Probably where the coaches put them most often. No, nose tackle. They <laughs> hate going inside. Well, that, that's right. Who would like that job? Good second effort by the rookie Dupard, and he's close to a first down. In fact, Toby Williams, a nose tackle for New England, described the position of nose tackle. He said it's like fighting a man in a phone booth. I mean, you're in such a crowd, and... It's more than one guy, too, that's usually fighting you, getting hit from all sides. It all happens very quickly inside, too, and there's not much of a chance to protect yourself. Third and about a foot. Oh, he fakes, and he's going for it all to Morgan. He's open and misses him. Oh. The Patriots on third and short, gambling on six, and they had Morgan deep downfield open. An excellent fake, but Mike Harden very alertly reacted to that play. It's Morgan's foot speed that gets him free here, but that ball just outside of his reach, and credit Mike Harden, who's had an outstanding year for a good reaction on that play. Camrio on four 
fourth and inches and ten. Now, could be a fake here. Barry's done it before. Nope. Beautiful kick. Mile high. And it hits on the goal line. So, Denver will start at the 20. Tony Eason, ever so close to regaining the lead. The big plays being made by the super players. Well, Elway has come through to Denver. Stanley Morgan for New England. So that part is held up. And almost a second touchdown for Morgan as Eason just had it outside of his reach. You want those big players to have their opportunities in this game. They have so far. And now Elway has his hands on the ball again. From the 20 after the long punt by Camarillo that went into the end zone. And Elway comes out throwing. And Mobley with a very big average for a tight end. We talked about his size as a target, but look at his running ability and his speed. Gets away from a tackle there, and it's Blackman who has excellent speed as a linebacker who finally caught him from behind on the 29-31 yard line. 49 yard play. Only Mark Jackson has a longer reception for Denver all year. Elway in a crowd, and it's off Jackson's fingertips at the 20 and Elway making a good throw despite the fact he was about to eat it tip it Dave Studdard is down for Denver and they could ill afford to lose this veteran left tackle they've had injury problems all year in that offensive line let's go back and watch that last play 56 Andre Tippett driving inside you don't want to isolate him on a back he's on Sammy Winder 23 and he just blew right through him forced the quick pass Tippett as we mentioned out for five weeks during the season knee surgery came back for two weeks really tuned up now almost back to speed not quite as explosive as he was and that's good news for Denver fans Stuttered is up In the earlier game, that sends the Giants as the host team into the NFC Championship game next Sunday. They wallop San Francisco. Sims with four touchdown passes. Morris rushed for 160. Montana knocked out in the first half. As the Giants, at this point, no question, they are the top team in the National Football League. But they'll have to prove it again against the Redskins, a team they beat twice during the regular season next Sunday. Here it's 10 7 Denver. 326 left in the first half. Elway overshoots Jackson. Elway was feeling the pressure from Blackman on his backside. Did a good job. You could see him flinch a little bit before he delivered the ball. He knew Blackman had a beat on him. John Elway is an unusual quarterback. He really does have eyes in the back of his head. Look at Jackson, though, saying, Hey, I'm open, John. Shoot me that football. But Elway knew how close that linebacker was to him. In fact, Blackman actually swatted at that ball, and had Elway had that ball up in the air, might have been knocked away. Big call, third and ten. They're looking right into the sun here. Four wide receivers in for Denver. Elway. This is where he's dangerous. He had running room. Now he's throwing long for Mobley. Incomplete. And Mobley was there. Despite two defenders, Mobley had a pretty good shot at it. Claiborne and Bowman were able to bat it away. This is one area in which Elway is unique. When a quarterback rolls out like that, he very rarely goes back across the field. With Elway, you don't dare turn those receivers loose over there. Mobley, the first man to get his hands on it, but it also bounced out of someone else's hands there. McSwain, I guess. Claiborne. Claiborne's Claiborne. hands. Yes, he had a chance to feel that ball, too. But Elway is so confident in his arm that he'll go transcontinental all the way back across. They're going to go for it on fourth and ten at the 31. Mobley had a real good shot at it. You can see his leaping ability. Elway, and he's going to pooch it 
Hello, there's a new wrinkle. Oh, it's into the end zone. So Elway trying to just kick it down there where they could pin New England. And they'll take the touch back at the 20 on the 31-yard punt. Pooch by Elway. He gets 11 yards on that kick. Meanwhile, well, Dave stuttered. They work on him on the sidelines, and he's limping noticeably. The calf was injured, is the report we receive. Also, Dennison injured uh, earlier in the game, and Will Hyde. They'll be checked at halftime to see whether they can play in the second half. Stutter did not look good. Let's look at that kick. Uh, a surprise from Elway, who's a do-everything kind of an athlete. Very quickly kicks that ball, but because it goes into the end zone, only 11 yards net. They bring it out to the 20. Three minutes, three seconds left in the half. Denver leads 10 to 7. Screen to Collins. Flag down. Two flags down. Collins stops shy of the line of scrimmage. Carl Mecklenburg, 77. Good acting on the part of Eason, but maybe we had a lineman breaking too quick. Play looked like it was delayed a little bit. Of course, the linemen are not allowed to cross the line until the ball is thrown. That's the call. man downfield some of the opponents would wish this man was ineligible or they'd like to see him go somewhere else we've seen him jump right over the top of those backs back there that was 30 mostly to Tupu and he not only got down on his feet but got all the way across and got a piece of that tackle that's why he is the AFC linebacker of the year downfield number 76 offense still first down too quick in getting downfield. Well, that, that really illustrates why he's a great player. Starting on one side, fighting through to Tupu two times, coming the full width of the field to make the tackle for a loss. Picked in the 12th round because they thought he was too slow. And he's been studying for his medical exams, pre-med school, and been up all night, all week long, said he's too tired to run. And they tested it. Eason underneath the Collins makes a good catch at the 17. Harden was there for Denver. Not only a good catch, great catch. That ball thrown outside. Collins diving out there to get his hands on it. Steve Grogan, when I asked him yesterday, who's the one guy that really deserves more publicity this year? And he didn't hesitate. He said, Tony Collins, he played half the year with broken ribs, never complained, does everything for you, runs it, good receiver, and a top-notch blocker. Between the 31 and 32, which meant a field goal would have been 49 or 50 yards. Obviously, Dan Reeves felt it was out of Carlos's range, so he went for the Pooch punt. Carlos's longest ever was this year, 51, but he would have been kicking into the wind. Second down and long, and a flag down, and so is Eason, and a fumble, maybe. That'll be a hold against New England. We talked about the defensive stars. You saw Mecklenburg in action a moment ago. That was number 75, Rulon Jones. The AFC's outstanding rushman who's flying in. Left side of your screen, number 75. And it's a stunt with Mecklenburg that actually frees him up, gives him room inside, stacks up on Easton. Looks like Mecklenburg got there first, though. It was, was the other star the who was there. Mecklenburg threw the flag. Well, that's a tough combination when you're trying to block him coming in from the same side. And they are toughest when they are in tandem that way. You don't know which one to, to favor and how to double team both of them off the same side. Third and 23. From the seven yard line, Eason from his own end zone. Underneath the Collins. And Collins, the 23, did a good job of getting New England out of the hole despite the fact they faced fourth and seven. Timeout called by Denver with 1.45 left. stars they're not all big plays Carl Mecklenburg trying to collect Tony Collins and Collins gets him to drop himself rather unceremoniously on the turf so in the battle handling 
handling those players down there in the pits. Nobody wins all the battles. Even the great ones like Mecklenburg have their bad plays as well as their good ones. Camarillo with 1.45 left. Denver has one timeout remaining. Camarillo's kicked some long ones. Now he can use the whole field. Ten men will pressure. Good solid kick. Lance Johnson drifting back to his 24. 30. And down at the 32. Mosi Chichupu made the tackle along with Craig Hawthorne. And a little bit extra. 53 yards on the punt. 13 return. Bill Sims and Lawrence Taylor will be the guests of our NFL 86 crew as they celebrate a, a giant win, 49-3 over San Francisco. One of the dangers of winning a game that is that one-sided is that it leaves you uh, with a hard time to get yourself aroused and ready for the Redskins this next week. And that's particularly difficult when you've beaten a team twice during the season, Dick. Denver trying to add to their 10-7 lead. Plenty of time. Screen to Sewell. And well done defensively. Eugene Profit was the man who submarined and spoiled the play. Profit, a rookie from Yale. Profit pressed into action because LePet is out of there. Ernest Gibson has gone in at corner. Made a big play there. Away guns. Incomplete to Sewell. Stops the clock with 106 left. Denver with one timeout. New England has all three of theirs. In case uh, they could get an incomplete pass here on third down and have to punt it, then the Patriots still might have a shot. But Elway is thinking much more positively. All at the 33. He has the Suns in there. Watson, Sampson, Jackson, and Johnson. Four wide receivers. Steve Sewell next to no way in the backfield. Good protection. And then it breaks down. Intercepted. Johnny Rembert has the ball at the 28-yard line. Andre Tippett hit Elway, and the ball flopped right into Rembert's hands. And Elway is limping. Elway's having trouble coming off the field. You might remember two years ago, Elway was hurt in that playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And a knee injury, an injured cartilage, and he is having real trouble getting off the field. Watch the left-hand side of your screen. Now, oh, excuse me, right-hand side. Tippett has moved over inside and just flew inside to nail Elway. Elway trying to take that extra time. That ball right into the chest of Johnny Rembert, who was able to handle it. That's great athletic play on both sides. Now, we showed Mecklenburg and his hustle and desire. Save that one. We'll see what why Tippett's an all pro. Meanwhile, New England with a chance for the lead. Easton, 25, 20, and he's to the 15. And a first bubble, the ball. And they say now the ball was down at the 15. After a 14 yard scramble by Easton. And they call time with 47 seconds. And that is bad news. That may be the cruelest blow of all as Elway heads for the locker room. and. We said it at the beginning of the show. You take Elway out of that lineup, and this becomes a rather ordinary offensive team. Elway, who played in the Pittsburgh game in the playoffs two years ago, and Dan Reeves told us that he'd known how seriously hurt Elway was, he never would have used him, but Elway wouldn't admit that his knee was torn up. Look at the effort by Tippett. Well, you see the tail end of it. He went through a blocker underneath him, bounced up and reached around. I don't think Elway figured there's any way that he could be attacked because Tippett was on the ground. Elway had stepped up into what he felt would be the safe part of that pocket. And Tippett just threw his body, has great body control, and came down on that left knee. Well, there's Rembert, the happy man with the interception. Again, we talked about the big name players. And there's Andre Tippett making a big play. Gary Kubiak is the backup quarterback for Denver. And here again is the effort by Tippett. He kind of gets his legs underneath Elway. 
you and can then see a twist there. You can see that knee open up. Tippett, not knowing Elway was hurt, of course, is cheering Rembert's interception. He's seeing the interception and knowing that his offense is going to have a chance to score here. 47 seconds left in the half. Two timeouts remain for New England. They trail 10-7. to 7. Covered. That's Randy Robbins playing for the injured Dennis Smith. Beatty is somewhat like Orson Mobley, who has come on in the latter part of the year to become a very effective weapon and tool for the New England Patriots. Just to see uh, how in tune these Denver fans are, Merlin. You mentioned down at that closed end of the stadium, this is where they you feel like they're right on your back and they're quiet now, but now it'll build. And watch Tony Eason. When he's ready for the snap, he'll put his hand up on his hip, the right hand on his hip. Second and ten. Oh. Incomplete to Irving Fryer. Tony Lilly was there with a hit. And Fryer trying to make the circus play. Third and ten. Well, look, there is one receiver in the league that can make the surface circus catch. It's this one. He must be, what, 10 feet in the air, maybe even higher, 12 feet of that, as he gets one hand on it, but unable to get both hands on it. If you remember from the highlights at the beginning of this game, the catch he made to end that Ram game in the corner of the end zone, able to pull that one down to pull that one back from defeat. Looks like an outfielder trying to stab a high drive. Third and ten, Eason in trouble. And down he goes at the 21. Mecklenburg again. The third sack for the Broncos. Rulon Jones there as well. And the field goal unit for New England will try to tie it up. 28 seconds on the clock. And because of the sack, it'll be a longer shot for Franklin. Well, this is what you would hope if you're on the... Denver sideline, tell your defense, look, you've got a bad field position, get in there and shut them down. No touchdown, at worst a field goal, and maybe even a chance to get in there and block that. 38 yards to tie. Top picker in the league, Franklin with those 31, and he drills it down the middle. And it's a new game at 10. But for the Bronco defense, they denied the Patriots the go-ahead score. And now we'll look at the backup quarterback. We understand now the injury to Elway was to his ankle. He had that twisted underneath him. That perhaps not as serious as a knee. They'll try to bind that up. We'll see if he'll be able to play in the second half. But Elway's great strength is his mobility, Dick. And I have believed that when he, when you... For the AFC Championship next Sunday. Deep to return are Lang and Bell. Lang on the far side. With the wind, Bell at the two. A reverse, a fake reverse, but it does not fool. 82, Derwin Williams, who makes the tackle at the 15-yard line. Dan Reeves had talked with Elway when he came out of the dressing room, and just guessing what they were saying, Merlin, it appeared that he was really asking him, okay, now, don't try to do something that's going to hurt the team. Make sure you can move a little bit. And we'll go back to something we said earlier. Reeves saying that if he had known how badly Elway was hurt in that playoff game two years ago against Pittsburgh, he would not have allowed him to play. He does not want to jeopardize the future of John Elway for one game. And there's another side. A healthy second-string quarterback might be better than a wounded first. So we'll see. The other is the ground game takes on added importance. Sammy Winder for about three. The statistics in the first half in New England, a bit of a surprise, outrushed Denver by 20 yards. And we showed you how pathetic that uh, New England rushing attack had been, but also a reminder that Denver has not stopped the run well late in the year. Gave up 298 yards to Seattle in their last game. Down, looking down, passing yardage, 165. Denver with the edge there. A couple of big shots by Elway. Two turnovers on the Denver side. None for New England. They've been so good at that all year long. And they were plus 16 on the regular season, second only to San Francisco in the turnover margin. Elway 
Dust does get it away incomplete to Vance Johnson. And uh, no sympathy from Don Blackman, who was really putting a charge on Elway. Elway slow getting back. And this is going to be a problem for him. Watch the drop. It's the left ankle that is hurt. And you see him. He can't really push off that ankle. He's got instant pressure from the outside from Blackman. And believe me, they will come after Elway now. When Elway is healthy, you don't want to blitz him because he can break out of there and run and get extra with time. But now I think the New England defensive plan will change. He might be more effective out of the shotgun because then he doesn't have that back step. He now has, in essence, a triple right formation with Sewell in motion. Sewell is open. He doesn't see him. Now he throws to Johnson. Complete. Close to a first down at the 25. I think he's got it. Well, it's all in the mark. Ernest Gibson, the man who made the tackle, is hurt. First down, Denver. It would appear from watching Elway in this situation that his problem is not to run the ball, but probably to cut and plant. He moves pretty good off there, and there's nothing wrong with Elway's arm. You better believe that. But he did throw off the right foot, not the left foot, on this toss to Johnson. That was a good move, and he had to push off the left ankle, but there he threw off the right foot. First down at the 25. Draw. Winder. A couple. Lawrence McGurry played at the University of Southern California. Made the tackle. They are the top runners thus far. What isn't on that statistic, when you see the two quarterbacks, is the fact that Raymond Berry went to a Greg Hawthorne, Reggie Dupard backfield, and actually they gave them a little spark in that second quarter. Both teams have alternated a lot of players. Uh, New England, for example, putting a lot of defensive linemen and linebackers into the game, trying to keep them fresh in pursuit of Elway. Gibson is okay. He's still in at the left corner. Screen to Winder. Blockers. 35, 40, first down. Number 60 threw a fine block. Chance for Mike Shanahan, offensive coordinator, to use his expertise. He knows that they're eager to get at Elway. He said, okay, come in on Elway. We'll throw this little screen. Watch the blocking out in front. 64. Billy Bryant, center, doing a good job of getting that first man down. Well, it's important for Denver to move the ball with their wounded quarterback, and they are. Seven more. Tippett with a tackle. When your main man is hurt, you got to rally around. Give him a little extra. I'm sure he's asking from that from that whole offense, from the offensive linemen, the rush, running backs, receivers, all of them. Watson left. Vance Johnson to the right. Both Winder and Lang. And that's another part of the strategy, keeping Carexa back in to help out Elway. In this case, it's a run and land. To the 36-yard line. Marion and Gibson with a tackle. Well, maybe that injury to Elway has ignited the intensity level of this Bronco team. They've responded well in this initial drive, and you sense a tentativeness about New England's defense. I thought they would really come out and attack Elway. They have not done that. This opening drive of the second half, Denver with another first down at the 35 of New England. Ken Bell. He played in Patriot Country at Boston College, was a free agent selection of Denver this year. Grant Williams, Lawrence McGrew teamed up on the tackle mentioned the offensive side the offensive line Billy Bryant the center Bishop on that side to guard Paul Howard number 60 coming around to get a block they're able to open some room inside Dan Rimsburg playing in there in place of Dave Stutter now there is Rod Rust calling the defensive signals for New England now Steve Nelson is injured linebacker Flipped out 
outside for 13. Orson Mobley, he set up the block for his tight end. I think Elway is worried about his ankle. He's not worried about his ankle. He turns around to try and block on this play. He's got Tippett lined up. Now watch him. He's he well, got to bang on Tippett. I'm not sure he was attacking him. Or maybe just trying to get out of the way. But Winder finding room outside with a first down, and this is a most impressive drive. Elway still limping. Fresh back, and he's running that way. McGrew made the tackle, and Lang chews up another six yards. That line is really beating New England's on this drive. Well, this is a rejuvenated offense, and they are going to a part of their game that was so strong early in the year, or much stronger earlier in the year. It has not been a powerful part of their attack, but it's been almost... Uh, negligent during the last half of the season. They've got it going here. Second and a short five. Bell. And the rookie is first and goal inside the five. That's 57 yards rushing on this drive. You can bet Reeves talked to that offense and said, hey, we got 30 minutes to play. If you want to go to Cleveland, let's everybody dig down deep. You know what's interesting? So often when you have a great player like an Elway, you tend to lean on him very heavily. A lot of other people, I think, at halftime said, hey, John is hurt. We got to suck it up and go. First and goal, five yards away. Lang. Down by Don Blackman. No, it was Lawrence McGrew, number 50. Blackman was there, but it was McGrew down low for a good hit. Keith Bishop, number 54. Several of those big plays right in behind him. Of course, he's getting his first opportunity to head out to the Pro Bowl. First Denver offensive lineman ever recorded ever. that honor, ever. And Elway's the first Denver quarterback First ever. time a quarterback's gone from Denver, too. Game of the yard, second and goal. Winder. And Tippett was there to greet him. No game. Is he a player? Andre Tippett, 6'3", 241 pounds from Iowa. Uh, second degree black belt athlete. That's one star matched against another. Tip it on defense for New England. Elway for the Broncos. Third and goal at the four. They're doing it on the ground. They're going right at that New England defense. Shotgun. Give the line. Doesn't work. 52. Johnny Rembert slashing through from a linebacker spot. Did he read that well? And so from the five, they're able to gain not an inch. It's fourth and goal, and the ball is in the same spot as where that series began. Although that takes some of the sting out of it, takes some of the heat out of that drive, as Denver will try for the field goal. That's a most impressive start in this second half by the Denver offense. It'll be a 22-yard field goal attempt by Carlos. And he's got it. The Broncos are back in front, 13 to 10. that had consumed nine minutes and ten seconds kept Elway warm on the field and he's not sitting down continuing to walk the sidelines to keep that ankle loose. The danger is if it stiffens up on him he may not be able to go. You sense the way this team has responded to that injury it really got them juiced up and firing out. Let's see if it's done the same for the Denver defense. Stephen starring the deep man on the goal line. Drills it. Starring at Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. And by Transamerica for insurance and insurance and financial services. The power of the pyramid is working for you. Back at Mile High Stadium, it's New England's turn. They trail by three. 
New England loves its nicknames. That's Steve Big House Moore down with a broken ankle that keeps him out. And that made room on the roster for another man. Well-traveled, Bill Whitehouse. <laughs> That's the, that, those aren't houses. That's a development. Whitehouse Bain. Boy, he, he never leaves. From B2, it is number 22, number 32, Craig James. And the ex-pony from SMSMU gallops to the 39, a 17-yard gain. I think that's his longest rush of the entire year. Both teams with the same idea in the second half, Dick, as they come right out to the running game. Mosi Tatupu running right over Louis Wright. Good job of breaking out of two tackles and out of a third as James gets that ball up to the 39-yard line. His longest prior run was 16 yards. James again. Uh-oh. Not this time. Fred Gilbert, Ricky Hunley, Rulon Jones. Minus two. Rod Rust talking with his defense. Talking specifically to Johnny Rembert. We mentioned how he misses Steve Nelson. His coordinator on the field, Rembert pushed into that responsibility of Rust talking to him specifically, I'm sure, about the things that were not done well on that drive as Denver just marched down the field and ate up the clock. 420 left in the third quarter. 13 to 10, Denver. Beatty, the tight end, and he fights to the 50, and depending on the mark, that could be a first down, Jim Ryan made the tackle. Beatty, in his senior year at Stanford, caught 61. Of course, early on, he was a young freshman when a man named Elway was running the ship at the farm there in Palo Alto. It is a first down. Late in the third quarter. Denver scored first, then Easton to Morgan, 7-3. To then Elway on a 22-yard scramble made a 10-7 Denver after a Rembert interception when Elway was hurt. Franklin kicked the field goal to tie it at the half. Carlos, a short field goal to give Denver the lead here in the second half. And flags go flying as James is knocked down at midfield, and one has to uh, suspect holding. Or a face mask call, perhaps. Yep, it is the defense, right. Or Hunley was in there as well. Louis Wright coming quickly up from the outside. Stephen Starring trying to knock him off, get him away. Face Louis down. reached inside, yard right Henley there. Number 20 defense, still first down. Great James's head snapped back. But Louis only given a five-yard penalty. We saw a 15-yard assessed earlier for the same kind of play. Yeah, that looked pretty dangerous from that angle, didn't it? Yeah, maybe because he didn't really get him down. <laughs> the extra 10 yards for not making the tackle, perhaps. First down and five. Hawthorne, bottom of your screen, used as a wing in motion. They run the other way with Tatupu and then throw back to Eason. They're looking for Morgan deep. He's there. Touchdown! What a throw by Eason. Louis Wright had pretty good coverage on Morgan. 45-yard touchdown. The kind of play and the kind of trickery that we have associated in the past with the Denver Broncos, it pays big dividends here as they toss that ball back on the flea flicker and find themselves looking up at the scoreboard in the lead. They'll try and make it even bigger with this extra point. And Stanley Morgan, who had two critical touchdowns in the Miami win to clinch the Eastern Championship, has two more today. That one going 45 yards. And New England bounces back in the lead. Franklin adds the extra point. And it's 17-13. To Tupu, a little throw back, and that must be backward to allow for the forward pass, and Eason airs it out. Stanley Morgan had to wait for it just a little, but not enough to deny him the touchdown. And a crowd revved up now in Denver as the Broncos have fallen behind 
17-13. Tony Franklin. To Ken Bell. did not run it out and might better have taken the touchback. He's out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Here's the touchdown move by Morgan. Watch Louie Wright. Louie knows he's got a problem here. He makes the wrong guess. He guessed that Morgan was going to go to the corner. Morgan went inside and Louie just inches short of being there to knock it away. He did close ground to the veteran right. Eason threw the touchdown to New England with a razzle-dazzle. Tsuku, a backward pass to Eason. Eason to the brilliant Stanley Morgan to take the lead 17-13. And now Elway, on a bad wheel, goes to work from his own 14. Open. Joey Hackett, the tight end. Barely throw to him. Make that Bobby Mitchell, 87. They don't throw to him. That's the first pass he's caught all year. They picked him up from San Diego on waivers late in the year. He was a former Bronco. And a big call, big play, 20 yards. And Issa Mitchell taking this one as Elway stays right dead in the pocket. We'll find out how good a pocket passer Elway is. Looked pretty good on that one. Two minutes, eight seconds left, third quarter. Take the winder. Elway open. Vance Johnson. Appears to be good for about 10 more. Lawrence McGrew there for New England. Might be a half yard shy of a first down. And after a first half, pretty well dominated by the defenses. A lot of short drives, a lot of three and out. Suddenly we've come out in the second half. Long drive Denver, long drive spectacular score New England and Denver starting, uh, starting off powerfully here with their second possession. Three down, second and one. They have a double tight end. Actually, three tight ends are in. Mobley, Hackett, and Mitchell. Winder. Let's get that first down and then think about something else. 47-yard line. Roland James made the tackle. Clock ticking down near the one-minute mark in the third. Let's take a look at the all-pro linebacker, Tippett, 56. Tippett a little bit late getting off on the ball. Held outside that time. Oh! <laughs> he isn't strong. Upper body strength and the use of leverage. That's the kind of thing you, you learn to earn a black belt. First down, Denver at the 47. Winder up the middle. For about five. At middle of the Bronco line, Billy Bryan from Duke, the center, Keith Bishop, who makes the Pro Bowl from Baylor, and the veteran Paul Howard, who is now 36 years old, the oldest guard in the NFL, are the men who are the key to what running game the Broncos have up the middle. Will be the last play of the first quarter. chest of Watson no flag defense by Claiborne on his way to the Pro Bowl himself there must have been a few words exchanged on that one Watson has only one pass on the day that one for 21 yards you see the initial bump Claiborne nailing in behind yeah, that's here. not the kind of thing you review for or penalties, but it looked like that was perfect timing or maybe slightly imperfect timing. Of course, you're seeing it in slow motion and not at actual speed. Big third down call. Oops! And they're going to get a free one out of this. Always looking for seven. He's got a man. Touchdown! Vance Johnson! The penalty against New England, obviously. The Broncos refused. No signal yet. Let's wait. Jerry Seaman will tell us. The critical mistake here is that when they get jumped offside, New England defensive line 
doing that gave Elway all the time he needed. It looked like everyone thought it was not going to be a play. Well, it's not only a play, it's a freebie, and Elway gets the six out of it. So the closing play of the third quarter, Elway to the speedy Vance Johnson, who is an Olympic hopeful from the University of Arizona in the long jump. Beats Ernest Gibson. Ernest Gibson actually misjudged that ball. The ball underthrown. Had the ball been thrown long, he might have had it. But Johnson came back and pulled it into the end zone. Carlos for the extra point. 15 minutes to go at Mile High Stadium in Denver, unless we have a tie. And the yard drive, no way to Vance Johnson. 48 yards for the touchdown. Elway got 77 of the 86 yards with his passes, and they're on their feet at Mile High Stadium as Denver has regained the lead. 20 to 17. The fourth quarter begins. And Carlos hits a moonshot to starring. Let's go back to the touchdown. And the fact that with the offside, watch Rembert. He will relax. He's looking for a whistle to stop the play. He doesn't even charge. Kind of ambles in a while. And that gives Elway all that extra time. And not only was it Rembert, it was the entire defense of New England relaxing. At the other end, it's Ernest Gibson playing for the injured Ronnie LePet. And I think, I think there was a panic there. I think he lost the ball and he panicked. Watch Elway. He knows how big that play is. New England with the ball, trailing by three. <laughs> Irving Fryer for seven yards. Lewis Wright made the tackle. There is Vance Johnson. He says he still thinks he can make the Olympic team in 88 as a long jumper, and he's continuing to train seriously. Well, if you jump about 28 and reverse those <laughs> numbers, then uh, you'll be there, Vance, in Seoul, Korea. Second and three, and the crowd really trying to help the Broncos. Got blockers. And James out of bounds at the 34 with a first down. Tony Lilly, that's a name you wouldn't expect from a defensive hitter, but Lilly, he really will pop you. He doesn't look, he'd win on What's My Line. He, they call him George Michael. He looks like the lead singer of Wham. The Wham part works in his play behavior. There's the pop on the sideline. Craig James, watch James come up right after him. He wants a piece of Lilly, quickly restrained on the sideline by his teammates. First down across the 34. One minute gone, fourth quarter. Denver 20, New England 17. Tony Collins. Rulon Jones tripped him up. And there was Tom Jackman to make sure he didn't go farther. Very difficult for Eason to call an audible, and I, it's hard to get those signals called. You're kind of tentative. You can't hear the quarterback that well. This is where that crowd really comes into play and that home field advantage peaks out. Listen to him now. Ball has been kicked away, so time is called. Brock has already, I think, told Eason if the, if the count that will start when he snaps the ball. When Eason is ready, now Brock snaps it. Down the middle, almost intercepted by Steve Wilson, number 45, in front of Irving Fryer. You feel a shift in this game, Dick, and Denver, found, Denver fans elated, but let's not forget how many times this year New England has come from behind, has come down to the final seconds, and still managed to pull games out. They know how to win. They're not afraid to pull it out and come from behind. Hogan knows how to call some plays out of his hat, too, as he did on that play flicker. Third and nine. Fumble! Oh, oh. And it went into the arms 
uh, Pete Brock, 58, the center, who saved disaster for Eason. Mecklenburg was in on the pressure of Eason. We talked about the stars on defense for this Bronco team. Number 77, the AFC's outstanding linebacker, Carl Mecklenburg, driving inside, reached back inside, and just tapped that football, knocked it free. Very fortunate that Denver does not have the ball. At least they get the yardage of the kick here. Vance Johnson playing for the injured Gerald Wilhite and punt for Mason, and he's going to look at a long high one from Camarillo to the 14. Rod McSwain cuts him down with a good open field tackle at the 21-yard line. Denver has the lead and the crowd. Twelve and a half minutes remain. Denver with the ball and a 20 to 17 lead. Ball at the 22-yard line. Camarillo's had four kicks over 50 today. The last was 55. This is Lang into the clear. to the 36-yard line, a gain of 14. Marion and Rembert with a tackle. Excellent blocking on the outside as they were able to pin Doc Don Blackman inside. McGrew held down inside as well. That's, a <laughs> that's an excellent hold there to keep him inside, but nonetheless, Lang breaks it on the outside for good yardage. Chipped in with 48 yards today. That's more than half his total for the whole year. Ooh, Elway unable to elude the pressure. That's the first time he's been sacked, and it was Don Blackman that got him at the 32. One of the big differences in this game has been the kind of protection that Elway has had. You're absolutely right, Dick. They have not gotten him to, to him today. He scrambled a few times to get away, and you've got to believe if Elway were healthy, he'd probably get away from that one as well. But Blackman is there to put the hooks on him and bring him down. And one of the things that Dan Reeves has been criticized for by the press here in Denver is sitting on a lead, not being as aggressive they feel as he should be when his team is ahead. This is not a team you want to sit on the lead against. Second and 15. Inside handoff to Sewell. Read well by the Patriots. 65, Mike Ruth. He's the Outland Award winner. Second round draft pick of the Patriots from Boston College, who has been on the disabled list most of the year. He was just activated yesterday. He heads to the sideline as they switch their people again and they're trying to keep their people fresh in the interior of that defensive line still has not provided them the kind of pressure that they want on Elway. Elway out of the shotgun here. Third and 14. Going deep. Mark Jackson, number 80, showing his speed. He's a little flyer from Purdue. They really caught themselves lightning in a bottle with him. The veteran Claiborne tested by Jackson, who was only 5'9", but he can fly. During this season, Jackson became the big play threat in the absence of Vance Johnson. Dick, he absolutely misjudged that ball. I don't think, I don't think he believed that Elway was strong enough just to unload it and put it out there. If he hadn't slowed down a little bit, that's a touchdown. 10-25 left in the fourth. Three-point lead. Moran to kick to Fryer. Fryer inside the New England 20. No fair catch. Ooh, Steve Wilson was close. And Fryer doesn't get much to the 21, and that's all. Darren Como and Rick Dennison with a tackle. Fans wanted a penalty. 10-12. Remaining in the four. He will take a couple of little quick hitches. There's right one. Right there. Again. And look how close this is to being caught. If he had just taken one more long step in there, back to touchdown. New England ball at the 21 with 10 minutes, 12 seconds remaining. Eason to Beatty, the tight end. 
to the 29, Jim Ryan, number 50. Dick talking to Merle Moore, linebacker coach for the Broncos. He said, the big thing that scares you when you play a team like New England, you can be in the right place, doing the right thing 90% of the time, 95% of the time. But when they have that speed, when they have those stars we talked about earlier, they only need a couple of big plays to beat you. Right now, Denver's trying to keep them from getting those big plays. Stanley Morgan is the man wide left. He has two touchdown catches, three catches and 100 yards for Morgan. What a play by Hundley. The inside linebacker stops James Cole in his own backfield. I asked Hundley if he made any New Year's resolutions. We visited yesterday, said, yes, I'm going to be in the Pro Bowl next year. That's my resolution. Well, the way he's played the last part of the season, he may be absolutely right. He could not play in Joe Collier's defense for a long time because Collier demands experience, and there's so many complex adjustments to make in there. But when he learned the ropes, he has really become a dominant force. That was a yard loss, so third and three. New England one for nine in third down conversions. They get this one to Tony Collins, but a flag is down. Collins out to the 48-yard line. Foley made the tackle. Now let's check the penalty. It's a 20-yard play if. Holding. Denver, so they'll take the penalty. I mean, they'll take the down, obviously, out at the 48-yard line. Holding number 45 defense prior to the pass. Penalty will be declined. First down. Steve Wilson, number 45, the man in the center of your screen, working on, what's that, Willie, no, that's Irving Stanley Fryer. Ford. Irving Fryer. Oh, all right, 80. Irving Fryer, two grabs, only allowed one bump within that five-yard zone, and minutes 30 seconds left in the fourth Denver leads by three Craig James ad libs for a couple to the 50 Tony Easton I'm sure glad that he's finally pulling away from the closed end of Mile High Stadium although the noise can be deafening at the other end not nearly as serious because of the configuration there they should be able to hear perhaps even audibles down at that end whereas down in the closed end Almost nothing when that crowd is roaring. Yeah, the Redskins make a lot of noise, and they're sold out year after year, the longest string. Denver is second, sold out for 17 years for outdoor stadia. Those two stand out in terms of noise. Eason almost intercepted by Wilson. That's two that Steve Wilson has had his hands on. We're going for starring. So many times after a player has been called for a foul, that adrenaline pumps, and you'll see him come back and make a big play. So it is for Steve Wilson, called for holding on the last play, almost makes the big interception here on Eason, who's been clean on that side of the slate all day. This is where Denver, with their complex defenses, they have Wilson in there as an extra back, playing that receiver man for man underneath made a couple of big plays. Here they come, full blitz. Eason is down. No fumble. Freddie Gilbert, number 90. There's a man who's really come into his own. He has five sacks on the year himself. Gilbert from Georgia played with the New Jersey Generals in the USFL. You want to shut a quarterback down? Put him on the ground. Easton feeling the heat, trying to get out of there. Still no open receiver and almost fumbled that football as Gilbert stripped him down from behind. Good speed from Freddie Gilbert. Camarillo, another punt. Vance Johnson back at the 10. Johnson, right there, catch at the 13. Tatupu is the man with a one-arm tackle at the 17. Freddie Gilbert, former dog at Georgia, making that sack. Timeout with seven minutes left. Here, the AFC Championship game, 12 noon Eastern time, 9 o'clock in the West, the winner at Cleveland. 
Tony Franklin, the kicker for the Patriots, anticipating that he might be in a position where he could tie the game with a field goal. We'll be watching him closely. But Denver has the ball and the lead by three. They'll try to chew up some time as they did so effectively on other drives this half. Out of bounds at the 23 is Winder. Roland James got him out of bounds. The Broncos have found their rushing game here in the playoffs. And that's what they would like to do as they drive upfield. You mentioned the earlier drive, first drive of the second half, nine minutes, and 10 seconds. They don't need to do nearly that well to kill this clock and walk out of here with a victory. Second and between four and five. Draw. Winder, big hole. First down at the 34. Fred Marion stopped him. Another long gain on the ground. 11 for Winder. There's Franklin. He said, "If I, he loves to kick here, he said, but the problem is the middle of the field. It's, he said, well, it's like the top of my head. He said, it's sparse and knobby. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is that. Worn down, although for this time of year, you can't find a better playing surface, a better natural playing surface in any kind of country that's this far above sea level, believe me. Nor a better day on which to play. No way. 65 degrees at kickoff time. Still must be around 50. First down. And it closes in on Winder that time after a couple. Garen Barris and Lawrence McGrew. The Patriots, who have not rushed the ball well, in fact, the worst rushing team for average in 20 years in the NFL, did well the first half, but the Broncos, as they beat New England in the second half in the fourth game of the year, 27-20, have established the running game in the second half. But in that game, they went up inside. Here, they've mixed it. Some very good runs outside as well. Winder going outside. And then back inside of the 41. That'll leave him about three yards shy of the first down. Blackman and Rembert with a tackle, and Winder nicked on the play. Speaking of injuries, if you ever had question about Elway's toughness, I think it's answered today. Uh, not only able to come back in this second half with a badly sprained ankle, but it two has men. Not slowed him down. Excuse me, Merlin. Two men are down Paul Howard and Winder, two Broncos. Timeout in the AFC and our answer earlier was looks like they're about eight or ten when you look what's happened in the playoffs yesterday double overtime Jets and Cleveland here it's coming down to a field goal game late in Denver no question about that Dick hard to pick a team and I felt somebody would emerge about midway in the season actually we had teams backing up in the midway of the season and now it's down to the final strokes and well we still got some deciding to do right now Denver has to be concerned about Winder and Howard, two of their main men on offense. We're on the sidelines on this third and three. Away. And it's deflected incomplete. No flag. Some of the fans want it offside. This play seemed to be in trouble from the start. The timing was off on the play. As Sewell came back into the backfield, deflected out of there by Andre Tippett, number 56, another big play. Or was that Brent Williams, number 96? You can see the six jumping out at you clearly. Young man from Toledo. So fourth down, under five minutes left, 457. Oren to punt. He's done a good job today. 47 yard average. Fryer, ever dangerous, given a hole, he could break one. Good, Good kick. kick. Wow. And it gets a roll to the 11-yard line. 10-yard line. Mike Horan, a team troubled with poor punting all year. He has really come through in the last parts of this season and has had his best day here in the playoffs. That one good for 50. Maybe the third time is the charm. 41st annual Hula Bowl on NBC Sports on Sports World next Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Paul Palmer, that fine runner from Temple. Jim Harbaugh, Michigan's great quarterback. Jackie Sherrill, Bo Schembechler, the coaches. It's next Saturday on NBC. And then on Sunday, 
at 12 noon in the east, 9 in the west, 10 here in Rocky Mountain Country. The AFC Championship. Will it be New England or will it be Denver at Cleveland? 90 yards away. Collins with a good game. Clock stop as he goes out of bounds at the 18. Jim Ryan with the tackle. Locked up. Close in where we were standing where it was so almost eerie and quiet earlier this morning. This crowd knows that they can have an impact on the game. You saw the record there at how tough Denver is at home. Let's let you listen to their part of it. streak. Easton too long on the throw. So it'll be third and two. We might add to the home record of Denver second only to the Bears in the last three years. The Patriots and everyone in football just amazed by their stat on the road. Seven wins, one loss this year, and the loss was here 27-20 to New England. Otherwise, we'd be playing in New England today. A unique confidence that they have instilled in part by their success in the playoffs last year and moved to the Super Bowl, but they just have the confidence they can do it on the road in front of somebody else's crowd. Third and two, Collins doesn't make it. He stops shy at the 20. Now you've got to ask the question, will Raymond Berry go for it here on fourth down? It's only about a foot and a half, two feet to go. Kicking team not on the field yet, and I believe they're going to go for it. He is. There it is. Call He's calling time out. Well, he wants some time to think about it. And I'm not sure with all the timeouts left. Well, now they got the clock running again. Now they stopped it at 4:01. I think Barry is concerned they may not get another. It was nice to speculate momentarily. Playing the percentages. But it cost them a timeout, which would be critical. Vance Johnson back at his 35. Now, Camarillo, who's rooted some long ones, this is where Barry hopes he'll get his best. Well, and let's see what happens now. If they don't get another shot at it, they'll wonder at why they didn't go for it. 404 left. Oh, his poorest kick. He gets the roll. Oh, what a roll! What a roll, and out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Oh, my. End over end, Camarillo says it's good to be lucky as well. He gets 59 on that one. Five times he's kicked over 50 yards today, and Horn has been his match, the kicker for Denver. Elway with 354 left. You know what he wants to do. You saw the running yardage that they've been able to amass in the second half. No question, but they will try and control the clock Best way to do that, run the ball, keep it in bounds. On the other side, New England, that has been very good at stripping the ball away, will be thinking turnover, and at worst, three and out of here. We need to give our offense one more shot. Ed Reynolds makes the tackle on Gene Lang, and Lang's uh, freshness and quick bursts have been a key factor and now he's limping coming out and Winder of course already hurt. They'll go in with three tight ends. Winder had been averaging 5.7 per carry at 97 yards on the day before he left the game. He's out of the game and now Lang is out. Two offensive linemen have been replaced in there. Mark Cooper's in there. Dan Remsburg is in there in place of the injured. the tackle clock running three minutes remaining this is a huge play third down and four New England needs the ball they trail by three Tony Franklin will kick 31 field goals this year 
140 points. He was far and away the top point getter in the NFL. And he had 14 in a row during that winning streak in the middle of the year. Seven, seven wins in a row. I think he was 14 for 14. 14 in a row. Elway is going to call time. So each team uses a timeout just to be sure. 2.39 left. They consumed, as you saw, it was at three minutes before the play. So they did consume a lot of time before calling the timeout. Such an interesting huddle. The three quarterbacks. You don't see that on any other NFL team where it has so much uh, impact. Well, and thinking about the kind of finishes that we have had here on NBC the last four ball games and big games we put up. Rose Bowl coming down to the final wire. Fiesta Bowl down to the last play. Of course, yesterday's double overtime. That's uh, first of important piece of information. It was New England that called the timeout. So they have one remaining, one left for the Patriots. Trying to preserve that clock. And here we are again, coming right down to the wire. Third down, and should Denver make a first down, they could all but chew up the rest of the time, because New England has only the two minute and one timeout left. So this, for the Patriots, Third and four is their play, and for the Broncos, a chance to win it right here. From the second. And they'll run it with Sewell. He's got it. First down at the 36. Out of bounds with 2.32 left. And now it'll take something special for New England. That really puts the pressure on. We talked about Sewell as a runner from that wide receiver position, and that's exactly what he did. Comes all the way from the outside. They hand him the ball. They get an extra blocker in the process, and he just steams around to a first down. Raymond Berry has preached all year long. The highs and lows, let them float through, play the full 60 minutes. His team has had an incredible uncanny knack of coming up with plays in a situation where it seems so dark. There's a timeout. New England, it's last with 2.26 remaining. Clock will stop, stop automatically now at the two-second or the two-minute warning. But there's not going to be a lot of time left, even if they can stop them in three and force the punt. Winder now over 100 yards. Only the second time all year Denver has rushed for only one player has rushed for over 100 yards in a game. Winder playing hurt. Elway playing hurt. Very courageous second half for this Bronco team. Yeah, well, we have a moment. Sometimes it gets away from us. We want to thank uh, those who are responsible. Our executive producer, Michael Weissman. Nathanson, our director, and Larry Cirillo, our producer, for all the pictures and sounds, and all the men and women who have brought you the action from Denver today. And here in the booth, the cord to Joe Costanza, Mark Friedman, Mer Merritt Cohn, Lewis Weiner, Ray Friedman, Cliff Dodge, Bill Olson, and we'll all be back together again on the banks of Lake Erie, giant Cleveland Stadium, the Browns, uh, Marty Schottenheimer with that dramatic double overtime win yesterday against the winner today be a lot of orange in that stadium but I'm don't believe those are gonna be Bronco fans back there in Cleveland second down seven 226 left it's Lang stopped short of the first down by Garen Barris at about the 43. That's three yards shy of the first down. And Denver will let it run down to the two-minute mark. So two minutes will be left. Third and three will be the call. And New England cannot stop the clock. The best they can do is stop Denver, force a punt, and have about a minute to go for a field goal. Two minutes left. Two minutes to Cleveland. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1985, tied in overtime, the Broncos face the feet as the Chargers attempt a field goal. Uh-oh, a high snap. The kick is blocked by the Broncos' Dennis Smith. 
And there's a lovely room service bounce for 11-year veteran Louie Wright. They'll not catch him from behind. He's going all the way into the end zone and across the track and up into the stand. Crushing defeat in Seattle. His emotions much different at that time than they are at this moment as he's covering his eyes. He doesn't want to see this play. <laughs> now that's a good CEO. When in trouble, just close your eyes and hope. The ball is at the 43. Elway has converted five of 14 third downs. If New England does not stop Denver on this third and three, you can make your reservations for Cleveland if you're a Bronco fan. And Dan Reeves will have his first playoff victory as a Bronco coach. But the Patriots, should they stop Denver, will get a final shot at it. happened for New England one they stop him short of the first down and two they knock him out of bounds so 155 left oh was that a big play they gambled on going wide and of course the risk there is that you can get knocked out of bounds can't blame Lang he's trying for the first down Barris makes the biggest hit of his life and watch Mike Ruth 65 chasing from the inside to force Lang wide he forced him right into Blackman, and then the inside-out pursuit by Veras to knock him out of bounds. That was a remarkable block tackle, because if he hits him low in an orthodox tackle, he can fall forward. He just blocked him out of bounds. Fourth and one. Horn to kick. Fryer back at the 12. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Return is on, and what a kick. Boy, what a beautiful kick to the one yard line and Fryer gambling and a bad gamble it was that ball would have been a touchback at the 20 you save time and get better position Fryer perhaps feeling his own abilities to break a long one instead they'll start at the 10 coaches will tell the defensive man or the but receiver, if he's inside the seven-yard line, let it go. Let it get into the end zone. But I'm sure you're right. Breyer is thinking big return. He knows he has that kind of talent, but he makes it even tougher on Eason and the offense. Great 54-yard punt by Horn. 90 yards away. Actually, they're 55 yards away from a field goal attempt. It won't matter. Safety. Roll on, Joe. from the 20 can be an onside kick and that's New England's only hope as they trail 22 17 Jones second sack of the day and his safety he's been uh, quite adept at that he has uh, three safeties in his career and one this year that's four plus this is five time to come up with your best football when it counts Rulon Jones hadn't had a sack in five weeks Children lives out in the country. He loves his football, but when he leaves the stadium, 
He says, I go home with my kids to teach them the outdoors, what my dad and what my granddad taught me. That's what life is all about. But on the field, oh, what a tiger. AFC Defensive Lineman of the Year, and more honors in store for him tomorrow. All right, now the onside kick. Look at the position. New England has all their players on the left side except for one. So Denver will balance on the other side. And it's Camarillo, not the place kicker Franklin, who will try the onside kick. It still must go 10 yards. The same rules apply here. But Denver can cover it inside that 10. It's a pretty good one, but covered by Vance Johnson. Or is it Tony Lilly? Lilly recovers it, and this game is history. at the 31-yard line with 135 left. New England has no timeouts. This is just a matter of a clean execution of a center to quarterback snap. Last year, it was New England, the surprise team, long shot, wild card, winning in the, against the Jets, and then in Los Angeles, then in Miami to go to the Super Bowl. And this year, for the first time under Dan Reeves, the hopes of the Denver Broncos are alive as they'll go to Cleveland. The most valuable player sponsored by Budweiser. John Elway of Denver. Budweiser makes a contribution to the United Way on behalf of the MVP selected throughout the course of our year. John Elway's courage certainly rewarded in that regard more than those numbers. But 13 completions, 252 yards. And injured with an ankle, he refused to go to the sidelines. For New England, it was another remarkably fine year. The home field advantage won by Denver when they beat New England here earlier could have been the difference for Raymond Berry's team. And on that sideline, Reeves has gotten his team to rebound from what they had to feel was one of their worst defeats ever under Reeves. In fact, so bad, they said it was the worst game they'd ever played defensively here in Denver. The final seconds and the final emotions. touchdown pass from John Elway to Vance Johnson on a play where the Patriots were offside relaxed Elway did not and hit Johnson with a bomb that sends Denver to Cleveland will be going to the locker rooms of the Denver Broncos and New England Patriots and indeed in the city that loves the color orange well, so for that matter so do the people in Cleveland it's a crushing loss for New England for the Denver Broncos, a quick week to get healthy, to prepare. And for New England, it all ends with sudden and cold bitterness. We'll be right back.